Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you as is usual. For this one we have a very special review for you today. This is my 300th video. So to all of those of you who have contributed to the channel over the last year or so with your likes, comments, subscribes, all of this kind of thing, I want to say a massive thank you. And uh, it's been really great to do all these. Some of the responses that I've had to some of these beer reviews has been really good and quite. it's quite cool to see that something that kind of started out as a hobby to me has become, it's become quite popular actually and it's steadily growing. So I thank all of those of you who are already supporting me in this but for this review we are going to do a very special beer this is one that I tried maybe about two years ago at the Moorings Bar in Aberdeen and it's a very special one actually so we are going to go to Austria for this one and this is the very first encounter I've had with an Austrian beer actually so we're going to go to Brauerei Schloss Eggenberg and have a taste of a beer that most of you who are into your craft beer will probably know. This is the Samaklaus Classic Beer and this is one that's only brewed once a year. The brew takes place on the 6th of December, the day of St Nicholas, because Samaklaus, of course, in a Swiss German means Santa Claus and that is the day of St Nicholas, which is very, very cool. And uh, it, goes under, it undergoes a 10-month fermentation period and stuff, so they basically brew on December 6th for the following year. And as you can see on this one, it's says brewed in 20 or bottled in 2013 so this is the one for 2014 obviously so as is usual with my beer reviews then I will take you through a very brief history of the brewery there's a castle and also uh, there's the castle of the brewery and a little bit about the town and the beer itself in this one but it is a fairly short history if you don't want to stick with me for that feel free to fast forward onto the latter part of the video where you will get just to the tasting the brewery websites in the video description for you below and I will put in a link that will take you to my future other, my other future reviews from Brauerei Schloss Eggenberg. It's actually quite a little known fact that they do produce some other beers as well, so I'll see if I can get a hold of those for you. I need to go back to Austria at some stage. But anyway, the brewery and castle is located in the town of Vorkdorf in Upper Austria. The town itself actually isn't too far from Linz and has a population of about 7,200 people and it's been settled on since Neolithic times due to its location. It was apparently part of Bavaria until the 12th century when it joined Austria and was occupied several times during the, the Napoleonic Wars. And in 1918 the district became part of Upper Austria and during the Anschluss with Germany in 1938 it became part of the Ober Donau uh, administrative district I believe it was called in those times but after 1945 it returned to Upper Austria and then in 1982 it was declared a market town by the Austrian state government so, the earliest building at Schloss Eggenberg was built in 971. Over the course of the coming centuries, the castle actually changed hands many times and it gave home in the early, in the early stages to Tierno and Ottokar Eggenberg, who were the lords of Weizsee. And, in this, and this was in the 13th century and then it was occupied after that by Duke Albrecht III of Austria and later by Albrecht IV. From the year 1464, it was occupied by various prominent Austrian families such as the Kirchbergers, Fernbergers, from 1523 and in the 17th century the castle was home to various famous Austrians as well Adam Graf von Herbertsdorf, Wertzel Graf von uh, Spritzenstein, uh, Ludwig Graf von Kufstein and then the Kremsmünster family later on so the brewery itself was actually established in the 14th century and at that stage they were simply brewing to supply the surrounding villages and commercial brewing was initiated in this brewery in 1681 by Michael Weizmann sorry, and he and this was when he purchased the property of the monastery from the Kremsmünster and in, in 1803 the brewery was, this was when he purchased it and then in 1811 the castle was then purchased by Johann Georg Forstinger and it was home to his family after that and today the castle Castle still is in the possession of his direct descendants. The owner today is Karl Stuer. So the famous beer from this the, from this castle is of course called Samaklaus, this guy here. And this is one of the strongest beers in the world with an EBV of 14%. And the name means Santa Claus in Swiss German, as I explained to you at the start of the video. And the beer was originally produced by the Hurleman Brewery in Zurich in Switzerland. Now Arbo Albert Hurleman, who is the founder of the Hurleman Brewery, was actually a world leader in yeast research. And the Samaklaus Christmas beer was first produced in 1979 for sale in Christmas 1980 and production was continued on an annual basis until 1997 when the brewery was closed but it returned in the year 2000 and it was this time produced by the Brauerei Schloss Eggenberg in collaboration with the original Hurleman brewers using the uh, original Hurleman recipe as well. 
So the beer is only brewed once a year as I explained to you on December 6th, the day of St Nicholas and it's thus quite a rare brew to get a hold of actually. The beer is a Bavarian style Doppelbock and undergoes a long fermentation with traditional cold lagering over a 10 month period which leaves very very little residual sugar in the beer apparently. So that is your kind of brief history of the castle, the town, the uh, the brewery and also the uh, the beer itself. So I hope you enjoyed that but I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork on this one. It's actually got quite a few languages on this which is quite interesting. I noticed on the back the bottle seems to have Russian on it so uh, or I'm not sure if it is actually Russian or if it's one of the other uh, languages that has a similar uh, character set. So as you can see there, there's the label. This is the Samoklaus Classic Beer and it has French on it uh, it has English and it says bottled in 2013 the world's most extraordinary beer and you can see a picture of Saint Nicholas on the top of it there maybe you can see it better on this label up here the bottle cap on this one's quite simple it simply says Santa Claus and it says it tells you a little bit about the beer on the back as well it says brewed only once a year on December 6th Santa Claus is aged for 10 months before bottling this beer is perhaps the rarest in the world Santa Claus may be aged for many years to come older vintages become more complex with a creamy warming finish. Serve with he hardy robust dishes and desserts, particularly with chocolates or as an after dinner drink by itself. So a very very interesting beer this one and it's one that I really really like. I tried it at the Moorings Bar as I said to you before in Aberdeen. 14% product of Austria, Produit du Austrie, I think it says on there. My French pronunciation isn't the best but it's got quite a bit, I'm sure that's Russian that's on this one so it must be quite a popular beer in Russia but without further ado we'll get this guy open and get on with the tasting then. Really cool to be reviewing this guy for my 300th beer review so let's get it open. A nice smoky open in there and let's get it out and into the glass. That was one thing I'd forgotten actually was that this beer was actually very very clear I always rem I always thought this beer was actually quite a was quite a cloudy one as you can see there's a nice sort of tanny beigey colored head but that's fading very very fast and it's just becoming a very sort of clear kind of chestnutty reddish amber liquid there I'll just bring up the camera or the light sorry I like to have a little look at the color of this one it's a very kind of I'd describe that as a kind of chestnutty coloured beer actually. It looks really really nice. Chestnut, maybe a little bit of a dark mahogany colour to it actually. As you can see the head's just kind of faded but there is a good bit of carbonation going through there. It's a very attractive looking beer. It is transparent. If I put my fingers behind it you can't really see it because of the colour but you can see the difference in the light trans in the light going through that. Not opaque at all. A lot of nice carbonation there but it looks a very very attractive beer so let's give it a smell and see how we get on here so without sugaring it up it has a very kind of quite sharp dark fruit character to it actually I think when it's coming out so a very nice sharp dark fruity character to this one you know kind of the typical things you'd expect figs and raisins it's maybe got a little bit of a kind of rummy aroma to it as well. You can smell the alcohol coming out of this one, but it's got a lot of kind of the very dark caramel aroma that you'd expect, or sort of honey or maple syrup, you know, something a little bit darker than just regular caramel. If I sugar it up a little bit, you start you get more of that alcohol coming out. And that's when you really that's when you really start to smell the kind of fused taste of this one actually. A very kind of lightly, it's got quite a, a little roasted character to it, but you've got a lot of nice dark caramel honey in there, but the fruit is the most prominent point of the aroma, I think. And it actually does smell quite a bit like rum, I would say. But a very attractive smelling beer nonetheless. So let's get on with the tasting part of this beer. This is one of my favourite beers I've ever tried, actually, so really cool to be able to do this for my 300th video for you. Beautiful, beautiful beer. Absolutely, as I remember it, beautiful, beautiful beer. Very syrupy. That's the first impression of it. You get a lot of the nice, kind of dark caramel, sort of the treacly or syrupy flavours coming up at the front. 
it's a very fused taste this one it's almost like you get a single taste but there's a whole host of things in it rather than being able to pick out the individual components too well in this one it's a very fused kind of alcohol fused taste that you get from this one it's beautiful though so Doppelbot beers are always like that you get a really nice complex taste to these beers but it's when you judge the aroma the, it's, it, the beer matches the aroma very very well I'd say you're getting a lot of the nice really dark caramel character a little bit roasted to it but it's actually very very sweet this beer overall mainly you're getting the nice kind of sweet rich caramel it's quite syrupy actually maybe the kind of maybe got a little bit of a maple syrupy sweetness to it that's the thing that always reminds me when you go to America or Canada and you have the maple syrup pancakes it reminds me a little bit of that but I think there is a little bit of kind of darker sort of molasses or you know like treacle kind of thing in there as well it does have just a little element of the kind of woody or woody character I think too as well but very very faint it's just a very sort of I would describe that as a kind of complexing flavour if you like it's not one of the more prominent components of the flavour there's definitely definitely a little bit of sort of chocolate sweetness in there as well and again the dark fruits are just are quite prominent in this flavour they're coming up and giving you a nice sharp edge to the beer the caramel is the main underlying component then it's just all sort of fused together with the out with the kind of alcohol warmth in it it fuses together and you get that nice kind of quite sharp dark fruit plummy sweetness to it it's absolutely beautiful really really this this beer is phenomenal if you've not tried it before and you're into craft beer what cave were you born in? That's all I can say. But, yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, in the middle of the tongue, you're getting quite a... You're getting a nice sort of caramel. That's where the dark caramel kind of resides, around the edges of the tongue, and maybe a little bit towards the back edges as well, is where you're getting the nice fruity character coming out of this one. There's no real... Uh, kind of it's a very malty beer I should say that but it doesn't have any real kind of bready character and stuff like that like some of the some of the uh, the Doppelbox I remember in Germany can have a nice kind of dark bready character to it this guy doesn't it it's a nice sharp syrupy character that's coming out of this one yeah it's it is very very syrupy and the flavor just kind of spreads all across the mouth this one as I say, a nice little bit of the roasted caramel comes out in the middle of the palate with the and it's definitely a little bit roasted. I think there is a teeny little bit of roasted character to it, but it's mainly a very kind of fruity and sort of syrupy flavour you're getting out of this one. In terms of the mouthfeel with this guy, definitely full bodied. The carbonation is very, very soft on this, but it's a very, very oily and syrupy mouthfeel, as I said to you really quite quite a silky and there's a lot of alcohol warmth to it as well in the aftertaste of this you're just getting a nice little bit of roasted caramel sitting towards the front of the tongue and just a little bit of the kind of infused fruit flavours to it but I mean overall this is a beautiful beautiful beer and if you do ever get the chance to try this I, I'm, I'm, I was asking earlier what cave you've been born in but it is actually quite hard to get a hold of this beer so I really would recommend, if you do get the chance, definitely give it a go. It's a little bit expensive. I think I paid five, maybe six pounds for this bottle of beer. But, you know, for the quality of the beer that it is, it's definitely worth it. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. Definitely, if you get the chance to go to Austria as well, you can always go and visit the, the Schloss Eggenberg, I'm sure. But I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. It's been really great to do this one for my 300th review, a beer that I really like and I tried many, many years ago. Well, not many years ago, two years ago. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the review. Please like, like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on this beer. Hopefully I'll get to Austria sometime soon and be able to do some of the other beers from this brewery. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, as usual, again, thanks for all your support over these 300 beer reviews. And I'll catch you soon with another one. I'm going to go away and enjoy the rest of this beer with my old man. Cheers.